Guess what? I made cookies. They're brown butter chocolate chip cookies. What do you like? Winners the deal. You could have a cookie if you like this video. They're really good. And then Ali would like to say hello. Say your piece. What's up everybody? I hope you are doing well. If we haven't already met, my name is Bailey. Nice to meet you. I'm a big collector of many things. One of the main things though being anime and as of recently, Vocaloid! And you're interested in it and you want like a history of Vocaloid, go ahead and check out last week's video. I take a deep dive on what Vocaloid is and what Hatsune Miku is. And today we are expounding, expanding, expounding upon that. Because today we are collecting Nendroids. Specifically two Hatsune Mikus and one Kasune Tato. And the reason why I wanted to save Kasune Tattoo and Nendroids for this week is one, Nendroids take forever to build. Oh my gosh. They are some of the best and worst figures you can get. But two, because Kasane Tato isn't technically a Vocaloid. Let me explain. So at this point, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Hatsune Miku. Now, at the peak of her popularity, she got a lot of different memes and gifs and spoofs and trends. And for April 1st of 2008, a forum in Japan, similar to Reddit, if you want to think about it that way, created a spoof character and announced it as a new official Vocaloid. But people actually liked her so much that she became a thing. <laughs> Not a Vocaloid, but a uh, voice bank, she actually has two. Now, if you remember, Vocaloid is actually a specific software owned by Yamaha. However, they are not the only ones that have voice bank software. There are some that are cheaper and allow you to create your own voice banks instead of having to buy them from specific companies like Yamaha. And because of that, we are able to have a lot of fan-made voice banks. And that is where Kasane Teto comes in. I believe a voice actress, I'll put her right here, created her voice and an artist that we don't know who their actual name is, created the design, which is obviously a spoof off of Hatsune Miku. The key factors being she has two big pigtails and her outfit is just obviously ripped off. However, she does have different colors, like her colors are red, red and navy blue, sometimes depicted as gray, and her pigtails are in spirals that are sometimes depicted as drills, and I love it. But after that, that's pretty much where the similarities stop, and that is because she is a complete spoof character. Some of the key things that make her different are, one, her gender is Chimera, and her age is actually 31, but she's in a 15-year-old's body. Her item is a French baguette, and if you do not share your bread with her when you are around her, she gets very upset. If you're wondering what I mean by her item, Vocaloids are actually associated different items specifically by the fandom. This all started because of a specific meme of Hasune Miku, where she is depicted to have a green onion or a leek. It's called many things that is based off an anime. And ever since then, all Vocaloids get a special little item. And as of, I think it was 2001, she was actually given an official, official voice bank by Synthesizer V, I believe it's called. And now she's able to officially talk in multiple different languages, including Chinese, Japanese, and English. However, just because she isn't an official Vocaloid doesn't mean she hasn't done many songs and different properties with them. She's been included in Hatsune Miku tours, included in video games, but I really love Kasune Teto and I really hope she gets a tour because I know this might be a blasphemy to say in the Vocaloid community, but I like her voice better than Hatsune Miku's. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Specifically the way that they use her voice, it ends up being a lot raspier and she sings in a lot lower of a register most of the time. And I just find that a lot more appealing than the constant high pitch that Hatsune Miku is often put in. With the release of the voice bank came an official character design for her. This specifically was to give her her own unique look so then she can be separated a little bit from Hatsune Miku. I like the design. It is a lot more relevant with current like idol in Japan and Korea and everything like that. However, I hate the color they chose. I wish they stuck with the more navy or charcoal kind of color and didn't go with this light gray. It doesn't pop well with her red. However, I do really like this new white ribbon that they included in one of her pigtails. Today we are unboxing the original Kasune Tato Nendroid. She does have a new one with a new design. However, I do not own that right now. But when I get it, you bet your bottom dollar I'm gonna make a video about it. Now I know I just talked a lot about Kasune Teto. However, we do have three different Nendroids to open today. And that includes Teto, who we're going to open first. But then we have two different Mikus, which includes a Sakura Miku and a Snow Miku. Let's get into it. First, we're opening Teto here and she has many different parts, but not as many as the two other ones we're going to open later. Now, if you don't know this already, Nendroids are small vinyl figures by Good Smile Company. We're also known to make prize figures and larger scale figures. But unlike Funko Pops, Nendroids are created to be very customizable. The original Kasane Teto Nendroid is number 569. And she comes with a red box with a pink interior with one different leg pose, a few different arm poses and hands. She also comes with a few different face plates, a golden microphone and a baguette. All of the different pieces of her hair are detachable, which means you can pose them in different ways. And her skirt is actually not attached to her legs for some reason, which makes it very annoying to try to put together. But 
that this was the earlier days of Nendroid. I'm assuming that maybe they decided later on that that wasn't as great of an idea. <laughs> However, I don't have a ton of Nendroid, so I don't know if this is still happening because it's not like her legs come with other skirts or anything like that. <laughs> Miku's more triangular wedged kind of headphones. She does have round pink headphones. And you can see overall her design isn't as detailed. Now something I didn't talk about in last week's video is that on Miku's arm, she has the numbers zero, one, which are supposed to mean number one. Even though she wasn't the original Vocaloid, she was the first one that I think they created really with the intention on continuing the line of anime-esque characters. And that's why on her arm, she has the zero, one. Teto here has the numbers 0401 to stand for April 1st. The thing about Nandroids that I mentioned to you earlier is the fact that they do come with all of these different pieces, but that means they come with all of these tiny little pieces and then they don't stay in their spots in the box very well. And it makes it really hard to put them back into the box or at least all the little pieces. What I have decided to do is use these little photo boxes and people have done a bunch of different things like getting little craft drawers and putting them in there. But I wanted something that could close because I have cats and because I wanna be able to order more if I end up getting enough Nendroids that I need more. <laughs> and I just put all my pieces in there and then I do have a label maker somewhere and I will be putting the labels and the instructions on that box slash in that box along with all of their little pieces. And that also makes it easier. So if I ever wanna switch things out, I can always just go into those little boxes and switch out the face plates or their little decor pieces or their arms or hands, whatever I need to do. The pose I decided to go with for Teto is her looking at her baguette with pride and excitement and joy, being like, I'ma eat this baguette. <laughs> I just feel like it fit her very well, but I was very tempted to go with the sassy pointing at you pose. That was so cute. Nendroids are also known as Nendos, by the way. The official name though is Nendroids. All right, let's go on to the next one. I'm trying to make this video and this one right here wants all of the love and attention. She hates that I'm picking her up right now, even though you've been on my lap this whole time. But just because you're in my arms and you can't control the situation, yeah. There she goes. I win. <laughs> Next up, we have another Sakura Miku. And oh my gosh. So when I ordered this, I ordered it off Mercari. And I want you guys to heed this warning. If you are going to spend money on Mercari, make sure you get all of the images you need. Because I wasn't paying a lot of attention, I guess, when I ordered this. And I didn't see in the one picture that the box was in the background that it was damaged. And it's not just damaged. I have no freaking idea what they just did to this box because it is a mixture of almost like water damage, sun bleaching. Like I have no idea what they did to this box to make it appear this way. Long story short, sellers, if the box is damaged, please say so and please take images. There are multiple variants of Sakura Miku as an Android. The one I'm opening today called Blossomed in Japan. And this one is the best Sakura Miku in my opinion. And that is because she has multiple different hair pieces. Yes, it's so exciting. <laughs> now in all of her different variants, she does have detachable hair pieces, I believe. However, these come with different types of pigtails specifically. There's one set that is more like her normal pigtails, which are big and straight with a little curve at the end. They are semi-transparent with a gradient, which I love. And then they have a very similar version, but I don't think there is a gradient on these and they are braided. And that is what we are going to put on our figure. Cause come on, how many other versions of Sakura Miku can you have braided pigtails? I can't think of any. Something else pretty cute about this Nendroid specifically is that she actually has pink headphones. In the other versions from last week, she did have brown and black, but I've never seen pink. And I feel like it just goes with her so well. With this Nendo, I decided to go with a little face that had the little open mouth. I tried to pose her like she's just walking along, having a little drink, having fun. And that is our Blossomed in Japan Sakura Miku. I bet a lot of you clicked on this video specifically for this Nendroid, and I do not blame you because this is the 2023 Snow Miku. Snow Miku has her own lore. We'll eventually be making a video specifically on Snow Mikus, so I'm not gonna get into all of the lore today. But what I will tell you is that every year for the last, I, I don't know how many years, there's an art contest held for the Snow Miku design and the winner gets their design translated into all of these different figures and merch. 2023 Mikus is called, oh, I'm gonna butcher this, Serenade? I, I would think it would be Serenade, but there's no D in there. But it's Serenade winter version. Miku, Snow Miku. 
Yeah. <laughs> there are some brilliant cosplays of this design and also amazing statues, but my favorite version of her for this outfit specifically is in the Android version. I feel like the big poofy outfits really translate themselves well into these because they're very cute. And once you start getting bigger figures with these huge dresses, I feel like it overtakes the character a little bit. And I feel like this is the perfect balance. As I was opening this, some of my favorite features were one, the box. Fantastic, fabulous. The box itself is like a collectible box and I love it. And you could even use it as a background and the box matches her hair. It's just so pretty. In this version of Snow Miku, her hair starts at a more of a cool toned blue and it fades to a light pink, which is a very nice change of pace. Her outfit is based off of very traditional Japanese wear, but with a very special twist on it. And if you wanna learn more about that, I will include a video to one of my favorite cosplayers and she explains more of the history about it. And I'm not even gonna pretend like I remember what half of it is, but there's so much detail and time spent in this outfit and I love the different layers of this design. I love how puffy it is. There are a lot of sun and moon symbols throughout the entire design. They have it on her brush leaves, bows. I think I might have even seen it somewhere in her hair. Could be wrong about that. I love her little bonnet at the top. If it's called the bonnet, I don't know. And something special about Snow Mikus is that the majority of them do come with this little snow bunny. And I'm sorry, but I totally forgot what its name is. But when I make the Snow Miku video, I will tell you the name. But her little bunny is dressed to go with her. As I pose her, I had a really hard time I'm deciding whether or not I wanted to do the brush or the umbrella because I knew I was going to be posing this Snow Miku with the other Nendroids that I had collected. I didn't want that umbrella to cover the other two. So we went with the brush and it fell so many times. And this Miku also came with two different base stands. It also came with a little back piece to put the bunny on as well. However, I did decide ultimately to not do that because I wanted to have the special stand. One, it was gorgeous. Two, it went with her hair. Three, I wanted to save space in my little display that you will see in a moment moment. And here we are. If you see the little switch box, no you don't. I also didn't want to stick these lights anywhere because I don't know if at some point I'm going to want to actually make them go all the way around the box. At this point I was just too lazy and I'd already been recording b-roll for this video for like three days in between working sessions because I also had a really big project that I was trying to wrap up by the end of this week. Also record this video and also have to try to find the time to get the correct lighting and I was also having a hard time with the grain on my video. It was complicated. It was so unnecessarily complicated. But anyway, we're figuring it out. <laughs> and here is the final result. I am so happy with how this came out. I love that I was able to pose Teto and Sakura Miku on the sides, like facing out in like the perfect way. I do wish I had a little bit more light on that Sakura Miku in the back because it ends up being a little weird. Thank you guys so much for watching. Next week, I do think we're going to have a One Piece and display video because I have like six One Piece pops, I think, or something that Chalice Collectibles gave me, so thank you, Chalice. And we just got two more billies. You guys are amazing, and always remember that you are loved, you are valued, and you are enough. Bye!